The Eastern Pacific Hurricane season last year saw a few little surprises, certainly one big surprise in the form of Hurricane Otis, which rapidly intensified and made a Category 5 landfall near Acapulco in October. There were also a few other strong storms that had potential, and of course Hurricane Hillary, which made a uh, fairly historic uh, passage into California during August. We also had uh, Hurricane Dora, which was an impressive long tracking storm, as that storm name often tends to be, it would seem. And so that's how last year played out. Now with the what could be an approaching uh, La Nina, a uh, lot of people suggesting that the Eastern Pacific is going to have a very quiet season. Um, well, this is our prediction for it right now, and we're expecting something near average. We're expecting a total of 15 named storms this season, 8 hurricanes, and 5 major hurricanes in the Eastern Pacific. So what can we tell you about it on our key messages? So indications so far, as I've mentioned, pointing to a fairly average season with a small chance of anomalous late season activity, but that's low confidence at the minute. Uh, it could happen any season, but sometimes you do get that kind of stuff October, November. Early season storms then could impact the coast of Mexico, particularly further east, um, heading towards Guatemala even. Uh, high rain producers uh, in the early season, May, June, July, could cause serious flooding concerns from Guatemala westwards as far as Acapulco, with a small chance of a major hurricane landfall early on, but I stress that that chance is fairly small. Now, uh, long tracking storms are still possible this year, uh, around a, and a secondary area around 120 to 130 degrees east, which is well out to sea, not far from the central Pacific region, uh, looking favourable in those areas for early to mid-season development, not threatening any land. Now, significant activity is possible during the middle of the season, late August, early September. We're getting some strong signals for the region around Jalisco, Nayarit, and Sinaloa in the western coast of Mexico for potential uh, strong cyclone landfalls. The Central Pacific, some activity possible there. We're seeing a few hints of things going on maybe for around the August period uh, around Hawaii. And as a result, it is a non-zero chance that we'll see some storm impacts there. And... Um, so this certainly could be something and maybe elsewhere in the basin things might start livening up a little bit around October, November, a little bit further west uh, heading towards the international dateline but of course no land areas in that zone. So a rundown of the uh, months then and what we think might happen of course once again this is monthly and it's no real confidence in this prediction but just a climatological versus modeling spread of what we might see currently one storm for may two for june three for july three for august three for september two for october and one for november let's look back at some of the best analogs for this season then and uh, two curious ones are the ones that come to light quickest 2010 is actually one of the best analogues right now and uh, you'll hear a collective groan from Eastern Pacific fans because that was a very dire season in terms of the Eastern Pacific being very quiet. Of course 2010 still produced a Category 5 storm in the form of Celia and a few other intense storms as well but very little land, land impacts. Looking at climatological modelling, it's safe to say that it won't be a repeat of 2010, and there is more chance of landfalling systems, um, particularly in the early season. Of course, 2010 did have an early season landfall, Agatha, which caused some serious problems in Guatemala. Now, looking at another prediction there, 1966 is another one that comes up. And uh, does anyone know anything about that season? I'm not sure either. Uh, but that is another strong analogue this season. Some other decent analogues, 1995, 1992, 1982, and some other seasons in distant history when we look at climatological patterns. Now, those seasons all featured uh, a few significant storms. Of course, 1992 was one of the busiest seasons on record in the Eastern Pacific. Obviously, it's not going to be like that. It's going to be much different this time around. And so some of these analogues can be hit and miss. Um, but certainly when we look at the... Uh, percentage chances of seeing a significant tropical cyclone impact, uh, the areas that we're really looking at there are around the areas of Jalisco, 
uh, for the overall most most chance of seeing a, a significant cyclone throughout the season ex extending up to the very tip of the Baja California Peninsula. Apart from that we've got a few other areas at 10% uh, much further east including a little bit of Guatemala and obviously most of the coast of Oaxaca. Uh, so we've got that and we've also got 5% for a big chunk of Hawaii, not all of the islands but most of them and general areas around there. So certainly interesting to see what kinds of impacts we could be expecting and the storm motions there as you look at that other chart there generally northwestwards into the coast of Mexico throughout the season obviously there's always a chance of one or two recurves uh, but those are less easy to spot uh, but it certainly looks like in the earlier part of the season you will see things forming close to the Gulf of Tehuantepec and forming and moving towards the northwest and affecting the coast of Mexico and given the current conditions possibly a chance at rapid intensification even in the early season. So that's the Eastern Pacific in 2024. We're expecting 15 storms, named storms, eight hurricanes, and five majors. A reminder that the Atlantic predictions came out yesterday, and we are predicting 21 Atlantic named storms, 12 hurricanes, and four majors.